Alrighty, everybody, welcome to Judson E. Taylor Field here at James Logan High School, where the James Logan High School Colts are getting ready to play the Moreau Catholic Mariners. Tonight, I have a feeling, will be the start of World War III out here in this football field. Joining us, I am Armando Galan. Brian Lee. And welcome to the stream. Well, it's not a stream, unfortunately, because, well... One problem after the other, Armando. <laughs> yes, indeed. Technical difficulties, indeed. Uh, I want to address a issue that we had in our last broadcast. That our crowd microphone was very, very loud. We're going to be adjusting that at this current moment in time. The crowd microphone is virtually non-existent. Uh, we will be gauging it up slowly as the game progresses. Uh, I do have a coordinator to my left and right, so you will hear some background noise here and there, unfortunately. But... I mean, this booth is very small, so unfortunately there's no way to change that. James Logan, it looks like uh, they won the toss. Did, are they going to defer? Uh, yes, they're deferring to Moreau Catholic, I believe, from what I have saw early on. All right. Well, let's go through the game time temperatures currently. Uh, last I checked for the JV game, it was 66 degrees. Currently it is 57 degrees with 15 mile an hour wind coming from the northwest section of Union City. So, uh, Looks like we're kicking against the wind. Yes, it looks like we are. Uh, so the wind's going to be coming in from uh, Dakota on the other side. Or I start, I'm sorry, Alvarado from the other side. Um, and Moreau is going to be playing with the wind here to start off this game. Well, let's go through the keys to victory here for Moreau. Uh, Moreau gave up 403 rushing yards last week in their loss to San Leandro by a score of 50 to 46. Uh, with Logan uh, having three running backs, that's going to be key for their defense to try and stop them. Uh, Logan, of course, that triple threat running back, that's going to be yeah, that three-headed dragon, Dwight Martin. Exactly. I don't know what kind of a uh, points you have for me and their partner but um i just gotta say limit our mistakes tonight there are five touchdowns called back against us uh great against grace davis Indeed. i would see all the mistakes being minimized tonight especially with a rival opponent in moreau they're looking for blood after um logan walked in and embarrassed them on their homecoming Indeed, and already not even a good start to uh, trying to clean up the play from last week as James Logan kicked the ball out of bounds here on this kickoff. Uh, Moreau's going to start at the 35-yard line here on this first and 10. Quarterback for the, for the Mariners is Sanford. Motion right, they're going to bring him left. It looks like Logan's running they're zone playing coverage. Zone. And we have, uh, I believe it's... That was a delay of delay game of from game. what I saw from the backhander yes, at far side ref. It definitely is a delay of game. So that's a five-yard penalty, and both teams starting off with penalties before the first play of scrimmage. <laughs> you know, the, the JV game earlier, you missed it, but we had like five false starts against Moreau. Well, that's definitely something that they're going to have to look to try and stop in today's game. Looks like they're running zone again. Yep. First and 15, motion again. Nobody's moving. It is a zone coverage for James Logan. And that pass was almost intercepted by Josh Galong there of, San, of sorry, James Logan High School. St. San Francisco, because actually I have a dual feed going on. I'm watching the Giants currently, and uh, uh, they are not <laughs> starting yet, but they will, be beginning, they will be beginning soon. Josh Galong almost took that to the house. He did almost take that to the house. That Him was and Jess is Duncan Niasulu are the dual threat linebacking duo we got to look at tonight. Yes, indeed. Second and 15 now. Zone coverage again for James Logan. The line shifts, and it's a handoff up the middle. And Shaman V. Duncan Nisulu on the tackle there. Did you catch the number there on the uh, run? Um, I did not, unfortunately. I was adjusting the clock. It we did, like it was we did have a one-yard gain. Yes. Well, it's going to be third and 15 now for Moreau, and Moreau already not starting off good on offense, and that's going to be a little dangerous to begin with. Third and 15 now. Looks like we got one safety deep. And zone coverage again for James Logan. 
zone heavy uh, defense. A rollout here, and it's going to be a run for the quarterback. Brought down by a host of James Logan Colts. And Sanford will be brought down after a couple yards, and good start for the defense there. I, th I think it's smart running a lot of zone tonight, especially with a mobile quarterback like that. You don't want your back to, to the backfield. So after a strong defensive series, fourth down from the 35-yard line, a punt here for Moreau. And that is number three. Mskuna on the kick, sorry. And almost blocked it right there. I believe that was by Josh Galong, right? Nino Gamma almost Nino had the Gamma. ball bounce off his shoulder. Luckily, it did not. Now, first down and 10 from the 41 yard line, and James Logan coming off of a game where they scored 40 plus points. Now, Could have been more than 40 plus points. Exactly. Now, for Logan, I mean, tonight's uh, key is run the ball good. This Moreau defense is looking like they are shaky against the run. Uh, do not allow points and no slow starts today. So let's see. This is a handoff up the middle to Dwight Martin. He does not break a tackle. It looks like he's going to gain about eight yards on the play. That was a Sammy Flores, Sammy I believe. Sammy Flores, yes. A couple of good blocks on the line. Second down and two now. Sanders hands it off again for Flores, and he's going to get a first down. Good grip on the football there, as that could have very easily have been a fumble. Uh, it looks like number 74 of Moreau trying to grab at it was um, Ibecta. Two wide receivers left, one to the right. Sanders with the running back now to his right hip on a motion. Snap. And it's a fake handoff. Sanders looking to throw up the middle incomplete. And it looked like a bad route there as that was a wide open pass. I don't know if he was supposed to break in a couple steps earlier, but it looked I like. I think that throw came out a little bit early, too. Uh, yeah, it could have come out a little A lot early. of miscommunication there. A little bit shaky, but that looked like it was going to be a touchdown if he had that. Well, nonetheless, it will bring up a second and 10 now. As. Definitely James Logan is going to be motioning a lot more when it comes to their running backs. We saw that last week, and here you are again. Another motion, and it's a handoff to Flores. Flores is going to try and slip a tackle, but he will not. And brought down by number two, that's Alexander. Salazar Alexander on the tackle. Malachi Salazar Alexander, that's one epic name right there. I definitely enjoy that. <laughs> Third and seven now for James Logan. Let's see a motion here. Is he going to motion left or right to the running back? Motion left, and the line is moving also. It's a handoff up the middle. Flores slips a tackle, and the ball comes out! Sanders jumps on top of it. Oh, man. That could have been dangerous as Flores just went. Oh, a little bit of extracurricular activity extra coming on. There's a penalty there. I believe that happened on the bottom side of the pile. I'm not sure who initiated that. Definitely. As that's a good shot. Well, I want to uh, real quick go through the crew real quick. So we got Brian Lee on color analyzations tonight. Uh, we got myself as play-by-play -play, as that's a penalty on James Logan, a personal foul. Yeah, uh, that was a personal foul, unnecessary roughness. And currently Katie Pinyanaway. KTP, as she is, enjoys to be called, is directing for us. And Gabriella Udohoven back on the cameras. Uh, KTP and Gabriella will be uh, alternating throughout the night. As I said, once again, the uh, coordinators will be uh, heard on the broadcast currently. The uh, booth is just a little too small. It almost touched the Moreau player there. Amaskuna. I'm not seeing Jeremiah Patterson on the field early on. He's just waiting for some action on the sideline. He's just jumping around, just waiting. Indeed. 
Let's see how Moreau responds on, on offense. They kind of got off to a slow start. Same with the Colts. Well, got to get that one first down. I feel like, especially when it comes to having a shaky offense, the, the number one key is having uh, a good start, but also getting that first first down. That's that's the hump right there. Yeah, I think you also got to get though. mistakes, get rid of your mistakes early on. Indeed. If you do commit mistakes. As you see, V moving up. Snap, and it's a handoff to number 10. That is Champin on the play. He's going to fight for some extra yards. A little feistiness from the James Logan defense there. That was Terrence Harrison on the tackle. Terrence Harrison initiated the contact first, but V came in like a rocket and finished it off. Definitely. A lot of physicality, and you're going to see a lot of that tonight because, once again, like we said, there's a lot of bad blood as of late. Uh, the last two, I, I believe it's three, but for sure the last two meetings between these two teams, the team hosting it could not defend their home field. Last yeah, season, let's see. Let's see what happens tonight, though. Yes, last season, 36-20 uh, loss taken by Moreau at their house during their homecoming, and that was revenge for what Moreau did to Logan in 2018, coming in here and absolutely embarrassing Logan. As it's a handoff up the middle, a little I bit just, more feistiness, a couple pushing and shovings. A little bit more extracurricular activity, nothing, yes. nothing more than that. But I just want to point out that V is pointing out their plays right before it happens. Like he is moving up, he knows it's gonna be a run. Like definitely. I mean, I saw him pointing on that last play. Let's see. Let's try and uh, get an eye on him here on this third down. As it looks like it's gonna be about a third and eight here. So that was no gain on the run. Yeah, he was stopped at the line of scrimmage. Under center now is the quarterback, Sanford. This is actually not Sanford. It's a rollout and a pass, and it's almost intercepted on the Nearly play. Nearly picked off. Tucker was the quarterback, actually, Magnus Tucker. Nino uh, Gamma and Shimon V. Duncan Nisulu were in the area of that ball. Indeed. And uh, Nino Gamma kind of slipped up. If it, looked, it looked like if he didn't yeah, slip, he it could have been... Yeah, it looked like he couldn't. He could have possibly broke that and trying to get that pick. 7:01 left to play here. Fourth and eight from the 30-yard line, and Moreau will punt once again. The punt is Amaskua. Jose Amaskua. And that's a very high arcing kick with not much distance at all. Let's see if Moreau is going to get a good bounce, and they do not. They get a bounce where they lose a couple yards. Down at the 49-yard line, and Logan is now across the 50. As even with the wind, kicks tonight have uh, still not really looked very yeah, well. Yeah, the spin is not there. 6.51 left to play here in this first quarter. Sanders in the shotgun. Let's see if Sanders is going to pass or run it here. Motion again here with Flores. They're going to hand it up up the middle to Flores. Slips a tackle, and he slips another one, but he's going to get brought down. Good response after that fumble. Indeed. Looks like that fumble did not phase Flores at all. He just went back there like he, uh, he didn't fumble. A good four, hard four yards there by hard Flores. Hard four yards, indeed. Looks like they're running a little bit of RPO tonight. Yes, definitely. Especially with the motions of the running back. And there's another motion, and it's another handoff to Flores. Flores slips a tackle and gets a nice push there. And it was a good block there by number 52. That is Jason Johns, the center, I believe. Yeah, it looks like, looks like um, Sanders is um, finding a seam with the RPO. Yeah, definitely. As... Uh, and this offense is looking a lot more dynamic already because they are able to gash some plays. Let's see how this is going to develop. Showing blitz here, showing blitz. Here comes the blitz. And it was not a run blitz. It was actually a pass blitz. They let the middle of the field wide open. Yeah, but these RPOs are going to kill Moreau if Moreau does not realize what they need to adjust to. Well, I think keeping the middle linebacker home would probably help out the most. Yeah, it's also looking at the quarterback, too. Sanders is doing a great job acting like he's going to pass the ball. Exactly. you got to see where the ball is going to go in case any run. And this is going to go outside, cut it back inside the hash marks is Flores. And does he have first down yardage? 
Um, I think it's third it looks, and an yeah, inch. Yeah, it looks like third and an inch here. Now this is where Moreau is set up perfectly for a play action. Let's see if I think I think Marcus keeps the ball here if Moreau is going to commit to the run. Yeah, it looks like they're showing blitz again. No safety back deep. All right, here we go. And Flores is going to get the first down. Ooh, big tackle right there. Who was that in the contact? Flores did keep his feet moving, which helped him get that first down. I believe it was number 25 on the contact there for Moreau Catholic. That is Amir Ed Edmondson. Looks like it's actually second and eight. The last oh, wow. play, they actually did call it the first down. They okay. gave it the first down. Well, it's second and eight then. Sanders is going to look left here, and the play is going to go motion right. Or, sorry, motion left, and we're going to get a false start there on 52. A little bit too much movement. As that looked like an awkward movement because it looked like uh, the line, uh, or uh, 53, I believe, from James Logan, the tight end, was moving too far out. Yeah, I believe that's what caused the, the little bit of motion. Like He kind of flinched there. Enough to get a flag. Well, here we go. I think they're going to motion right now because they got 53 playing on the left side. Nope, they're going to motion left again. And it's a handoff, but a bad snap. A bad exchange, rather, by Dwight Martin and Sanders there as they did not have a communication. And a loss of yards now, and this is a third and forever. Yes. It's third and 17, I believe from the marker. Once again, the slow start. Logan's got to make sure that they stop this from happening here. Watch out for that sharp blitz. Here comes the blitz from the blind side. Sanders throws right up the middle. He's got a man wide open and caught for James Logan. Touchdown, DJ Johnson with the touchdown. Great awareness for Sanders to step up in the pocket. He looked at that blitz and he did not was not phased at all. And a great touchdown there as James Logan is now in the lead 6-0. No flags on the field for this touchdown either. Yeah, it took, it took two flags last week before D we got our first DJ touchdown. DJ Johnson um, was actually open to play. Um, Sanders was sacked. They, they, they looked for him again, and they found him. And it was the exact same blitz, too. Blitz coming in from the blind side. As Marquez is going to come in and kick this extra point. He's got it. It's 7-0 James Logan here early in the first quarter. Well, midway through the first you quarter. You always love to see left-footed kickers on the field. Definitely. I just want to see Terrence Harrison attempt the extra point again. How amazing was that to see the reaction of his teammates and, and Davis when he made that extra point? I think the, the coolest part about it was uh, seeing the reaction, right? But also seeing the replay of it on the James Logan Instagram account. I know. That was really fun. Yeah, it was amazing just seeing someone being able to to kick their field, kick an extra point. And there you can see our scoreboard camera. We have a scoreboard camera today. <laughs> All right. You know, what a response by the offense to to uh, come out there, turn the ball over, get the ball back again, and then score seven points. Yes, indeed. And uh, I think the resilience is really a, a good word, too, because Logan was going backwards there. They fumbled, they went backwards, ran, went backwards, and uh, were still able to get it a touchdown there on third and forever as uh, San Shaman B. Duncan Nisulu misses a tackle. Alexander, Malichi Salazar Alexander on the return there, slips a the tackle. That ball Tawaki. nearly popped out. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess he was probably going for the ball, but still slipping yeah. a tackle from, from Shaman B. That's not an easy task. Neither is outrunning him is an easy task. Ugh. He'll come at you and you will not outrun Definitely him. Definitely he is fast and he is furious. Him and Genesis. So 3.15 left on the clock. It looks like the ball is going to be placed right in the midway point from the 21-yard line and the 20-yard line. 
uh, for Moreau. And there's a timeout by Moreau. Looks like Moreau's going to talk it over. Yep. We'll take a caster's timeout, about a 30-second timeout. All right, casters are back now. First down and 10 from the 20-yard line. It looks like the midway point from the 21 to the 20, so 20-and-a-half yard line. We'll call it that. Yes, 20-and-a-half. There's no, there's no .5 on the scoreboard. As I want to give a shout-out real quick to Katie and Gabriella. Once again, they are not trained in their positions. So far, doing a great job. This is an end-around here to Campen. And, sorry, Chapin. Campen. Campen. What 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 is wrong with my English today? You, you know, I I've learned to keep my mouth shut when there's an end around or a jet sweep. <laughs> you, you guys week. knew what happened last week. Last week with the Chris Collinsworth moment. <laughs> oh my goodness! Luckily, there was a flag that gave us the ball back. And not only that, no one could hear it either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I knew what I said. They heard me down there. Oh man, yes. And that is <laughs> meme-worthy material for months to come. Motion left, and looks like Logan's going to run man defense here. And a shifty running back there out of Devin Arnold. And I remember Devin Arnold as the, as the man who scored the three-pointer last year in Moreau's and uh, James Logan's uh, basketball, basketball game. game I was, we were both up, there. Yeah, that ended up actually being the dagger to James Logan in basketball last year. <laughs> As Logan was having a great season offense, I mean, uh, uh, when it came to uh, home games, but I mean that Moreau game that was an intense game, and Devin Arnold hit that three pointer, and <laughs> they never looked back. That blitz kind of backfired on Logan, sent two guys. Well, one guy missed, and then Arnold just blew past the second one. Great shifting move by Arnold, and uh, good speed. Pass. Oh, oh, almost intercepted. Isaiah Gallo almost got that one. Is that, I believe Isaiah Gallo did not play last week. I didn't see him on the field very much at he, least. I believe he was on the field for a couple of series, but he did not get a lot of playing time. They made sure every, a lot, every, every player got playing time. Even uh, Kyle Tuzon, a.k.a. Kyle Tarzan, was out there. <laughs> he, I believe he scored oh, a touchdown. Man. Yes. Uh that one was another one that was called back, I believe. Yeah, Kyle. Tuazan is his real name, but Tarzan is the name that's designated on the roster sheet. So I imagine that's probably just a, a That's nickname. his na team nickname, you know? Yeah. Looks like another blitz coming. And it's going to be a quick pass. Ooh, big hit by Shimon Veen Duncan Nisulu. Oh, man. That'll bring up third down. Yeah, after the incomplete pass. V and Genesis came soaring in. It's an incomplete pass. It's it an, incomplete an incomplete pass. pass. As uh, there is a timeout now. I believe they're going to add some more time on the clock after yeah. that miscommunication. Well, no one's communicating yet. <laughs> Well, we'll keep an eye on it. Third and ten. Well, not third and ten. Third and uh, maybe nine. <laughs> no, that's third and ten. That's third and ten. Yeah. All right. Eye either formation. Way, either way, Moreau's got to get this. Tucker under center. Fakes the handoff to Arnold. Tries to roll out the pass here, and it's caught. Caught by Alexander. It looks like he's short, possibly. No, they're calling it incomplete. The the side oh. judge called it incomplete. Oh, wow. Well, that was... What an amazing throw and effort, exactly. though. Exactly. An amazing throw by Tucker. 
Tucker had a in guy in his in, face. In between three guys with a guy in his face harassing him in the pocket on a rollout opposite field across his body. You got to be careful because when you have a play action like that and you're rolling out, there's always going to be a free rusher. Well, and not only that, but when you turn the corner, you don't know if your guy yeah, is you're, triple covered, double covered. You don't know anything. You have to just see it. You just got to get rid of that ball. Exactly. You have to see it. If the guy is coming at, if someone's coming at you in your face, you have to get rid of it or throw it to your guy. And uh, Tucker decided to throw it, and it worked out a little, but it was an incomplete pass, unfortunately. And this is on the return. This is Jeremy Jones. And Jeremy Jones had two touchdowns called back, trying to get it from this one. one it's a to block. Beat. And is he going to beat him? Yes, he is. He's in for a James Logan touchdown. No flags on the field for that no one. No flags on the field, and Jeremy Jones actually gets a touchdown here. As he had two called back last week, not this one. Jeremy Jones, you are finally on the board. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that must feel really good for him. Yeah, no flags on that play. Executed perfectly. Well, that, that final block, he had two guys getting that final yeah, block. Yeah, exactly. I believe I, he also bobbled the ball. Marquez for the extra point. Marquez indeed for the extra point. As Armando was taking a water break. <laughs> yes. Something is good. As that's why my voice sounded out of condition because I didn't have any water up here. This time I have two bottles. All right, I am. Yes, I am over -prepared. We, we're prepared. I have I have a bottle on my side. You have two bottles on your side. Yeah, last week we weren't prepared at all. This week we're over prepared. I had a little bit of caffeine before the game, so my voice was a little bit iffy too. I gotta say. I just had some caffeine literally in in, in the uh, hour that I left before kickoff. As I would like to redo this segment from last week, let me uh, find my notes real quick. We were we I did a segment last week for Frankie Eric Gian. Unfortunately, because of the audio problems we had, we couldn't quite do it. So here's a segment from Frankie Eric Gian. If you guys haven't been caught up with the news, Frankie Eric Gian was accepted to UCLA, and uh, I reached out to him for a statement. He said, "I'm beyond grateful for the support I've received from my friends and family and mentors. I would like to thank." Uh, Logan's former teacher, Miss Wright, who was a uh, teacher and educator at Logan. Uh, she guided me through the college application process and has overall taught me so much since my freshman year. And Frankie is excited and eager to make his community proud and make the most of his college opportunities. He's Frankie, as, as a friend of yours, I would like to extend my greatest wishes to you and uh, my great um, pride for you that you have this opportunity to go out and make a name for yourself and do whatever you want in this world. I hope you succeed, and I wish nothing but the best for you. You are a great individual, and you deserve everything. He is starting at um, wide receiver tonight, actually. He is starting you, at wide receiver. If you see on the bottom of our screen, um, you would see him line up um, on the right side of Marcus. And he was the third touchdown call back last week. Exactly. <laughs> I have them all written down. <laughs> As that was actually a really good return. I don't want to take away here from Moreau. A really good return from Moreau, and they Great got their return. best starting field position of the night. So let's Let, see if they can do something with this. With let's see if they seconds. can answer and uh, score some points on the board. Well, they definitely need some. As Logan's special teams apparently um, really looking good. And uh, let's highlight the slot receiver there, number 26, a huge target. Big hit there. As actually, there is no 26 designated on the uh, Max Preps roster. As I believe 20, I know that there is a, uh, a Moreau player that um, used to be the, uh, or, or, I'm sorry, uh, is a uh, descendant of my one of my dad's old co-workers <laughs> and them two had a uh, little uh, worksmanship rivalry between James Logan and uh, Moreau last season. Yeah. Uh, I know there was one of the players, I believe, or no, it's not 26, it is 25. So let me get that name. Uh, Edmondson. He's Amar the Edmondson, 6'2", 200 pounds, junior yes. at Moreau Catholic I, High School. I believe it, uh, it was him. I mean, it could be mistaken. 
But there was one player, it, it, it's the specific player that I was talking about, the descendant of my uh, dad's co-worker, had a torn muscle, I believe somewhere in the legs, was out for an entire year, came back against us last season for a storied comeback, and a lot of people did not believe he was going to be ready for next season. He came back last year, played against us, and returned a couple kicks. Uh, I mean, great story, of course. Moreau Catholic um, has a large pool of players to come through their school. So does James Logan. Uh, and tonight's war at the end of the first quarter is 14 nothing. What's your thoughts so far, Brian, about this game? Um, I think that that Logan needs to keep their foot on the gas, definitely. Um, even though we did not see many mistakes um, in the first quarter, there are going to be bound to be mistakes soon in the second, third, and fourth quarter. Moreau Catholic has gone off to a slow start, and Logan has just got to take advantage of that. Indeed. I think um, specifically for Moreau, they just got to limit the mistakes, um, especially offensively. I mean, they've, they're getting good drives together. They are looking sharp, but they're just not finishing drives. They, they stall out after, the, after a first down or two. You can't be satisfied with gaining the ball across the 50. You gotta score, especially against Logan. Their offense is going to be dynamic this year. I can already tell. First down in, oh no, I'm sorry, third down and seven here for Murrow Catholic. It's gonna be a pass. Oh, look out. Missed sack right there by Rodriguez, but a host of James Logan Colts comes to Clean them up. Alex Rodriguez, of course, had the uh, scoop and score last week. That wasn't called back. That was a touchdown. That was amazing to witness that. So, oh, man. A scoop and score by Rodriguez and Terrence Harrison scoring the extra point the same oh, night. Oh, man. But not, not only that, but, uh, I mean, it, it was kind of funny when I was playing it back because I'm, like, thinking to myself, man, my voice is dying. Like, you could just hear my voice absolutely dead <laughs> in that clip. You can hear it very faintly. That's one of the only clips that is actually audible for our, for us as broadcasters. But tonight we fixed that. Yeah. <laughs> we have an, uh, oh, somebody what a block. watching the audio as this is a block here. Jumping on it is DJ Johnson. That could have been really he dangerous. He with the block. DJ Johnson uh, fell on it. Jeremiah Patterson was spotted for his first snap of the game. He was back deep to return that ball. Oh, man. Another mistake by the Mariners. Oh, man. That is not good. And once again, the special teams for James Logan really making some huge plays. Exactly. You got V coming in, and then you got the blocks for the return and, and, for DJ uh, Johnson. Sh shadowed by our speakers over there, those 1975 speakers that we have is uh, <laughs> Jeremiah, Jeremiah Patterson. just beat his man. And the ball's on the ground, but I'm going to pick it up. That was an RPO. Jeremiah Patterson had him beat for that fade. Yeah. Um, wh whoever's in charge of um, uh, making renovations to the football stadium, how about we get these poles with these 1950 uh, speakers out of here? <laughs> I mean, that's the only thing that will uh, get Mr. Boy's voice out on the stands. Oh, man. I mean, let's build another one. You can see it's shadowing uh, Patterson here. You can't see yeah, Patterson. Patterson's on the lined up one-on-one on one again. Two receivers right, motion to the left hip. Fake the handoff, one-on-one -on -one with Patterson. Caught Patterson for another James Logan touchdown. The man who was shadowed by the speakers. I was just about to say, he beat his man as soon as that snap ball came out. Maybe the speakers are blocking everybody's vision, not just ours. What a great, great first um, series for Patterson. He was not um, in for the first quarter. What they a, had What a great half so far. Yeah, Frankie Arguian was doing good. Yeah. Looks like Marquez is out again. Yep. Uh, Logan did not have a communication on the... <laughs> Johnson um, runs out late. Actually, that was Forbes. Was it Forbes? Yeah. Yeah, Angelo Forbes. Good hustle, though. Good hustle by Angelo Forbes to get out there. And no laces. <laughs> oh, you, you know what happens laces. when there's laces. All right. 
In other uh, sports news, the Giants currently no score in that game. Uh, Johnny Cueto on the mound for San Francisco, and also uh, Jose Abreu, the reigning 2020 MVP, hits the first grand slam of the MLB season for 2021. So good baseball news. But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This must be historic too. Since when has a football announcer <laughs> announced at baseball. the beginning of a baseball season <laughs> about baseball stats for a high school football game? That must be in the Guinness Book World Records somehow, folks. All right, we're going to make it happen. Guinness Book World Records. You know, it would be a world record if you announced two high school football games at the same time. <laughs> Something similar I, to uh, Kevin Harlan doing uh, Dolphins and the yeah, Ravens. I'm just, a few I'm, years I'm back. just doing. I'm, I'm broadcasting one game like per radio on, yeah, on yeah. my uh, on my computer, and then I'm I'm watching a, a monitor feed of another game. You know that would be nice as long as I get double paid. And again, an out of bounds kick for James Logan. And boy, the uh, uh, the search for kicker begins for James Logan now that Mark uh, Vargas is no longer at James Logan. Mark Vargas uh, hit that game-winning kick against San Leandro last year, um, 33 yards out. Coach Rodriguez called him Mr. Automatic at one point. Well, I'll tell you what. That San Leandro game in two weeks, that is going to be war. Also. Yeah, especially after what they did to uh, Moreau. Um, 50 to 46. <laughs> that must be game of the year material, though. If you're an offensive uh, fan, that is game of the year material indeed. Hand off up the middle. Devin Arnold gets shut down by Galang, and he uh, breaks Galang's tackle, but in to clean him up is Alec Rodriguez, number 61, swallowing up that tackle. If it's not Galang or... Genesis, we got Rodriguez and Terrence Harrison in the <laughs> trenches waiting. Oh, man, the two defensive tackles. The two guys that scored last week. <laughs> two guys that scored. Talk about a dynamic Colts team. A lot of people like to talk about how uh, Colts, the, James Logan in general in almost every sport, they don't really have as much size as other teams. But the they got speed is there. They got dynamic teams, though. It, all across the board, all dynamic, fast teams. Genesis just came flying in on that play. Yeah, as the quarterback got shook up there, Tucker. And it's third and eight now. And this Moreau offense, you got to wonder what's what, uh, what's going on now. Are they just not getting good blocks? Or are they not getting good? I just think they're getting vision? outran right now. Genesis and Galong have been running down every play. Well, one thing you really got to do here because this uh, this team is really uh, just well rested defensively for James Logan. You got to yeah. get this first down. You have to try and start gassing them at this point, trying to slow them down. I also think Moreau's side is getting tired on defense. You got to keep their defense off the field if I was Moreau. Fake handoff to Darnold or Arnold. Sorry, pass is almost intercepted. A lot of contact there. No flag to warrant the contact. Yeah, there's three guys on that ball. <laughs> no warrant on that contact. That was completely legal. <laughs> uh, let's see if uh, Jeremiah Patterson is uh, needed on this uh, punt as Patterson that last one. Yeah, Patterson is in, but he wasn't needed because that punt was blocked oh, last series. I mean, it's just it, 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 it's the same that I have as a uh, as a cashier. Anything that can possibly go wrong will go wrong. And so far, I mean, I think that's just the uh, the analogy for this Moreau first half here. Take some Moreau As bounce. Patterson is going to get it after the Moreau bounce. Breaks a tackle. He's got a wide open lane. He's going to be brought down on that play. He gets a nice block as it looked like it could have been a blindside block, but... I guess the refs didn't see it. That was definitely a blindside block. Yeah, I'll, there, there I'll was definitely a little that. bit of um, a holding there, but I don't think that was enough for the ref to really throw well, there, a Well, there was a holding on one side and a blindside block on the other, so Logan got away with murder twice. Well, well, if he brought that back for a touchdown, I think that would have been called back. Possibly. But, yeah, Logan starts off again in Moreau Catholic territory. Oh, and man. let's see what they do this series. Well, Moreau Catholic has to get a stop here. They are tired on defense, I got to tell you. 
it's going to be very difficult to try and stop this Logan offense. Really good blitz. Wide open across the middle of the field is DJ Johnson trying to break a tackle. He will not. DJ Johnson, that was almost a James Logan touchdown. As I called that, I saw that. I was, I, this was the one of the only times that I did not watch the quarterback. I was watching what's going on downfield. I want to get more vision as, as to what's going on, especially in the secondary. It just looks like they're just opening up way, way too much field to James Logan. Yeah, they got a. They're playing with too much cushion. I mean, if uh, Sanders hits him in stride there, that that would have been a touchdown. Can we talk about again. that amazing blitz pickup to allow Sanders to throw that ball? Yes, we can. And here comes another blitz coming from Moreau. They backed Blitz off. Blitz does not come in. And that was number 14. That was Lars, Romeo Lars. I believe that's a yard or two. Yep. Going to bring up a second and goal. As I'm going to look for the light switch in a sec here in the booth because it is dark once again. Friday night lights, everybody. And off at the middle to number 25, and he's in for a James Logan touchdown. Was that 25? I believe that was not. Yes, 15. I believe yes, that, that was Martin. the White Martin the third. I cannot see very well down uh, across the field as this is now just. This real, is getting away this is, this, real quickly. This is getting away from Moreau really quickly. You're, you're moving past. Uh, having a slow start now now this game is just getting past them marquez again with a point after he's got it no good oh no he, he missed it okay i can't even see over there yeah i a, saw the referee we got, awkward, we got an awkward <laughs> we have an awkward <laughs> angle it's hard to see here yeah awkward alignment we for apologize sure. for that call there but that alignment was not very good i barely saw the referee wave it was no good Myself. Yes, I, ha I have a, a monitor blocking me and then a giant pole that is not uh, transparent. And these two layer glass windows aren't helping us either. Oh no. <laughs> I look out one, uh, one open window and it's bright and it's beautiful. It looks great. The stadium lighting looks great. I look out the other and it looks like it's all dim and gloomy, like it's about to be a horror film in here. As I'm going to mute my mic real quick, Brian will be the only standing broadcaster for a moment. I'm going to turn on the lights for everybody in here so that everybody can see. All right, Marquez to kick. As that very barely helps out, hopefully these lights actually... Uh, <laughs> start to uh, heat up. So I believe they start dim and then they heat up later. Is, and did, was that? Oh, okay, that yeah, there was bounce. a flag down on the far end of the field there. Well, that ball ran out of bounds probably. I don't know why you would try and pick it up there. I believe he picked it up with one foot out of bounds to cause that penalty. To oh, there you go. That's probably smart. That still goes in Moreau's favor though. Yes. As we saw a similar situation play out in a 2016 game, I believe, against the Packers. Yes, uh, L.A. Uh, yeah, Packers in L.A. Uh, Ty Montgomery um, did pick up that ball with a foot out of bounds. Yes, and he instinctively he touched it, and then he realized what he, he was realized doing. that if he took a foot out yeah. of bounds, he would have gotten that penalty that would put and him there at was, the 40. There was three Rams in his face. That's a lot of guts to do that when you have three professional football players running at about 20 miles an hour at your head. <laughs> You're just standing still. <laughs> and that ball did not roll into the end zone either. Yes. And uh, a little bit of frustration uh, starting to seep in, I believe, for Moreau. I mean, you can't blame him. You can't blame him. Nothing is working so far. Yeah, early on, that, that mistake that the Colts made with the fumble, Sammy Flores fumble, that should have been capitalized. Well, one thing I think they really need to do here is it, it is of the utmost importance that they score here. Uh, Moreau will get the ball coming out of the half. So if they could score heading into the half here and... Um, Moreau does not get the back, ball, come back actually. Out and score again. Moreau actually oh, no, um, Moreau received not, this half yeah. because um, Logan did defer, won the toss and deferred. Yeah. 
Missed tackle by Alec Rodriguez. And a couple gain of yards. Couple yards. I can't tell who got the, the final tackle, but I did know that Rodriguez missed. Some more sports news. Uh, Seattle is just taking the lead against San Francisco. Um, yeah, frustrated Giants fan over here. As we get, we got the uh, the dual threat here, San Francisco and San Francisco, me and Brian here. Yeah. <laughs> As our... Uh, <laughs> Our game clock operator is a uh, Dodgers fan. <laughs> See his hat there. He's he's laughing, getting a kick out of this. Oh, and a nice fake right there. Gains a couple of yards from uh, Tucker. And that's uh, that's good for a Moreau first down. Now you gotta keep it up tempo. I would honestly yes, go, I would. Go I would. Here. I would go for a huddle here. I would just keep it going. Yes. I keep let's see. Going. Let's see what they they call here. Because one thing. You have to get this defense moving for James Logan. You have to get them spread out because one way to stop speed is to make them run. Make yes. them run and tire them. Make them go sideline to sideline. That's what, what um, Logan has been doing this entire first half. Well, and, you know, like, let, let's talk about the 2019 49ers. That's what they did best yeah. when they were at their top game. They were able to move the defense yeah, in a zone coverage. to help them to execute their own plays. Take the right side of the field, for example, for Moreau here. As that's going to go left side and a little bit of contact, no flag. That might have gone for a touchdown. I did not see anybody back to help. Well, in both sides of the field, there were the right side, there was two guys open. Left side, there was nobody that was covering him. I just think that the ball is not getting there. Um, um, on enough. time, fast enough. Mm -hmm. um, the receivers are there, but the ball needs to be there uh, precisely. Exactly. There you don't want to lead your receiver. You just want to hit him. Take as much yards as you can get at this point. Yeah, Tucker Tucker um, is giving too much air right now. I think that he would have gotten that touchdown. Well, let's see what he's going to do here on the second down. A motion left. The line is going to motion themselves. Here, let's go. And De let's go. no, that's not. No, that is Devin Arnold. And Arnold mm -hmm. gets brought down hard, I believe, by uh, Shimon V. It's going to make it a very, very oh, no, short no, third eight. down play. Oh, I'm sorry, fourth down play. It's going to Yeah, it's going to be a fourth and one. No, thir third and short. Third and short. Third and one. As that was uh, very awkward by the. Uh, <laughs> down marker. Yes, uh, initially um, our, our uh, nearest ref um, called it a first down, but he moved the yard to the le our left. Oh, I see. And called it third and short. Let's see what third they do here. And one. Line motions again. Arnold takes it again. He's going to get the first down as he gets a nice push and gets a couple more yards after the first initial contact. There you go. Now Moreau's got a little bit of confidence going. They got this defense on their heels. Now I think Logan is perfectly set up for a play action, possibly. Yes, I think I think he, he right here there's, is a good. There's a timeout. Moreau. Moreau does take a timeout here. So it looks like they're going to try and talk it over. They're going to see what they want to do. I, mean, I think this is a perfect position to, to have all your options open. You got Logan backing up to their own territory. They're moving up the field. I think that anything could work in this point in time. Well, I, I think the key here is you got to watch the motions. The D-line motions, the linebackers motion, but the, 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 the secondary stays the same. The, the, the secondaries right now, they're running three men deep. So let's see what if they switch it up here. Um, they haven't ran a uh, man all, all night. Well, it has to, it, ha it will come down to this. However, the D line or the, the linebackers maneuver, however, they are going to uh, adjust themselves. Because let's say, for example, they motion right. The, the, uh, the D line motions right. You want to make sure that play goes left if you're Moreau. You want to keep it away from the, from the majority of the hats, and that's for any of you. Young players or young coaches out there, of course. Hats. You got. <laughs> that's one of the first things you learn as a coach <laughs> and as a player. I think I think Logan's doing a great job with contain, though. They've only let a few slip by. Definitely. As a, it, 
once somebody gets contact, it seems like there's about four other Colts that comes in to the pile. That's when speed comes comes to your advantage because mm -hmm. you see, once that initial contact comes, you already see like four guys uh, right at the ball. Indeed. Tackle right there by Genesis Duncan Isulu. The first time I'm uh, mentioning the brother of V. And uh, Genesis, of course, much like his brother, likes to hit hard. <laughs> They're both Loves speedy content. and hard hitters. Yes, they what love What a duo content. they are. Both of them had a great game last week. Reminds me of uh, Julius on Friday, uh, or on uh, Remember the Titans. Yeah, love me a little contact. <laughs> Second down. Hand off to Arnold. He's going to take this he has inside. A low seam. seam and uh, another tackle by Genesis Duncan Isulu. There you go again, likes the contact. As we hear um, a parent shout out Genesis' name. All right, and that's going to bring up a first down. Now, in more news, uh, Buster Posey in his second game coming back already has two home runs. <laughs> Amazing. Well, welcome back, Buster Posey. We missed you indeed in San Francisco last year. Now back to the game after the uh, the huddle. <laughs> First and 10, 27 nothing. James Logan so far. Arnold takes the handoff. It looks like he might have had the outside angle, chooses to stay inside the hash marks though. I, I think it's just a matter of reading like who's gonna chase you. You got you got V coming in from the far end. You got you got Genesis coming the near side. I think you use your power here. Indeed, and I mean, I think, honestly, when it, when it comes to uh, wh whatever you decide to run across the field is how the secondary is aligned. Uh, because they, they like to um, flip the secondary after e each couple of plays so that it throws off the offense. You're going to notice like we may that getting here. a blitz off the edge here. It looks like Dwight Martin, or no, I'm sorry, it's still Jeremy Jones. On blitz defense. is coming. Yeah, Blitz is coming. Oh, good tackle right there by David Tupa. David Tupa just scooped that right up after the Blitz came in off the edge. I believe that was Je either Genesis or Joshua Galong. I couldn't tell from here. But whoever came in, came in fast. And a very good shot by Gabriella there. Absolutely killing it with the camera so far. And uh, Katie killing it with the... Uh, directing for us so definitely fortunate to have some more hands to help out tonight as you can see the uh, the game the stream is a lot less messier than it was last week fake handoff Tucker's looking to throw he's gonna throw incomplete it was intended for number 44 on the play by uh, Jesse Charles that uh, was reminiscent of a uh, old 49ers offense yep uh, the bootleg Bootleg option, throw it to the uh, tight end or to I, the I would, I think, I think that's more of a uh, L.A. Rams option, though. But th we had a tight end. Old school Niners. Old school Niners, <laughs> new school L.A. Rams, Sean McVay type offense. Oh, man. You, you, had, you had a guy straight up in his face. I'm, I mean, and, and when it comes to the West Coast, I mean, I feel like, especially in the NFL, we are gifted with some of the best coaches. you got Sean McVay, Kyle Shanahan. Don't forget Matt LaFleur. Matt LaFleur. That coaching tree is Cliff legendary. Cliff Kingsbury. I mean, all really great coaches. I don't think Cliff Kingsbury was a uh, West Coast guy. He was an air raid offense. Pass is almost intercepted there. So I was talking about West Coast. Uh, well, really just coaches on the West Coast side of, 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 of the United States continent. Looks like they are attempting... Never mind, that was a turnover. Was that? Yeah, there's... Call, there's. Oh, it was, it was a fourth down. It was fourth down. Now Logan has possession. Well, that's that's a killer. See what they do here. End around here. And a wide open scene Nobody's for Frankie there. He's Arrigan. gone. Frankie Arrigan is going! And the UCLA Bruin is in for a James Logan touchdown! That play was perfectly executed. You had three blockers in front of Marcus making it look like he was keeping the ball. 
and then Frankie Eric Guillen sneaks behind them. He just kind of like hands it off, throws it, pitches it and back the, to him. The future UCLA Bruin. Oh man, Frankie that play happened so fast. That play happened so fast. I mean, speed. Nobody That's was the there. That's the first thing I'm thinking of when I see that play. Is speed. Oh my goodness. And now for the extra point, it's blocked. Yeah, and two guys had a hand on it. And it's not like the NFL where if you block a punt, you I mean, you block the extra point, you can take it back for two points. It's just dead ball after a block kick. Yeah, I think for they do that wondering. to minimize injury risk mm -hmm. um, with these younger um, kids. I mean, th honestly, I have to say, uh, from from the college level down, I mean. Obviously, you don't want injuries in any any form of a sport or gathering or anything, but especially from the college level down, it's just beyond upsetting to see someone get hurt. Yeah, especially if, if you're just playing for the fun of the game, you know? like Exactly, and that's why you're there. <laughs> like for, you're just there to have fun. For college football, uh, for high school football, uh, <laughs> little league football. I mean, the worst thing to see is injury. Yeah, it's just sad to see injuries pile up. As Logan is in a commanding spot here in this game with 58 seconds remaining here in the half, I mean, just commanding so far. After that, f after that fumble, Logan has not not um, stepped out off the gas. Mm -hmm. Nice kick there from Marquez. And a return for Moreau. Brought down by Jeremiah Patterson from the back. So let's see if Moreau can actually try and move the ball down the field, get themselves in a position. They to were score showing here. some life last series, but that quickly got shut down. Well, one thing that they really have to do here is move fast. You got 52 seconds on the clock. Yes, I think tempo is your best option there. As I mentioned um, earlier, I think that um, playing up tempo against James Logan is big because these guys rely on speed and athleticism to get to the ball. They cut off one side of the field. Once they cut off one side of the field, you're not going anywhere. Here we go, first down and 10. Looks like from the 42 yard line here. Pass out to Arnold. And Devin Arnold, one of the only bright spots so far for Moreau. Not on that play, however, as he was shot. DeLong again with the tackle. Oh man, Josh, an absolute missile. <laughs> that, that should be his nickname at this point, the absolute missile. I mean, the kid has speed, he runs up and down this field. It's like he only runs gassers at practice. Snap. Shotgun roll out to the left side. And it's a sack by Josh Galong. There he is again, the missile. I think we've we've called Josh Galong's name more than any other player for the past week. I mean, seriously, and you see the, the speed on display there as he went from middle in between the hash marks all the way to virtually the, the corner. <laughs> Can we talk about the coverage in the secondary, though? Nobody was open on that play. Well, nobody's running free either. Yeah. I mean, there was one play that Moreau had a chance to get a guy that ball did wide not get open, there. and that ball did not get there. I mean, the uh, quickness and speed of the, of the defense, and especially in the uh, d uh, secondary, is just absolutely eating row alive so far uh, nobody's getting able or is getting able being able to run free whatsoever uh, and anytime they have the chance it's not capitalized on and we got 10 seconds left on the clock here as uh, we'll see what Moreau wants to do honestly I, I I'd say just stack everybody up on one side and let them run <laughs> yeah up Three receivers to the left, one to the right. 
just see how far they can run. I mean, because right now ripping in, ripping into these kids is not going to really do much. Let, tell them, all right, look, have some fun with this play, and then we're going to talk about this first half afterwards. Yeah, I don't. So I don't think. Sure that, I don't think they're going to be having fun in that locker room. No, uh, definitely not. But let them have fun on this play at least. I mean, at the end of the day, these guys are kids, you know. Uh, kids, uh, just um, let them loosen up. Maybe you know, tell them a joke. Try to get them to loosen up because at this point, everyone is tense. Yeah, it looks like they're going to try it for a hail mary here. They got two to the left and two to the right. Let's see, bottom of the screen. That's the matchup right there. Nino Gamma on Moreau's guy. Oh, and he breaks his route, and just absolutely no help from the line as Tucker is going to be sacked. And that's going to end the first half there. And, I mean, the analogy of absolutely nothing going right and um, absolutely everything that can possibly go wrong going wrong is the way to say it for Moreau at this point, as it just seems like so far this game has just absolutely gotten away from them. Uh, I mean... I mean, I think, I think Moreau still has a chance to um, clean it up. And let's well, see, because... They, I think the key going into the second half at this point is when Logan gets the ball, Moreau has to get a turnover. That exactly. Is, that is, they, they need something. They need a big shock play in order to try and get their momentum back and try to get some confidence back on that team. Because so far, I mean, you could just see it. Like, Moreau is playing with absolutely no confidence. Now, um... We are going to mute all the microphones now, and we will have a presentation from the James Logan cheerleaders. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting the music ready for your cheerleaders, your halftime entertainment. Sorry, technical difficulties. Alrighty, welcome back, everybody. Well, welcoming back the uh, broadcasters. Uh, well, what do I have to say about this first half? 
well, let's just let's put it to one word. Um, shocking. Absolutely shocked as to how this game has turned out so far. Brian, what do you have to say? I would, one word. <laughs> I don't think there's a word even shocking to describe what has happened. Like, I thought that Moreau would, would keep this game close. But early on, they haven't been capitalizing on the mistakes that Logan did make early. So let's see how, what, how they do the second half in terms of capitalizing well, on what Logan does. See. I think um, what's in order right now for Moreau, let's get a turnover. I mean, seriously, they need something to just give them confidence. Make sure Sammy Flores and Dwight Martin don't run all over them. Exactly. That's that's another key I, we'd like to look at, because the running game has has taken over. Is that DJ Johnson on the return? It is, and he's got a wide open seam. He's got speed. He can run. The right flag through is all down. These flag guys, is and down. There's a flag down. Flag yeah. thirty-one. Yeah, that flag came out. I saw someone get um, blocked from behind. That's going to be 15 yards. Well, there you go. Now, 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 if you're Moreau, you have to capitalize on this. You've just been gifted 15 yards to put Logan back further from where they just were. Because they would have had it past the 50-yard line, right? About right around the 40, inside the 40. Maybe inside the 45. I, I couldn't quite remember. But now you have to, you have to capitalize on this if you're Moreau. First down and ten from the twenty-one. I th they're showing blitz on the top. See Sanders, if they go for it. Sanders motions. Here comes a motion. DJ Johnson. No end around. It's a handoff. Is that number seven? That indeed is a number seven. That is Cesar Rolas. Rolas. You know, last time they ran a jet sweep on that side of the field, that was mishandled. <laughs> I don't want to keep on benching oh, it, but it man. is on that side of the field. You're, you're right going to have another 20. Chris Collinsworth moment before tonight's over, I guarantee I, I you. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> Hand off of the middle. Caesar gets nowhere with it. He's going to lose a couple yards. Well, from the looks of it, they are capitalizing on that 15-yard penalty. And, and there you can hear some emotion coming from the Moreau sideline. And you got to like that. you got to like feel, feeling this attitude and, you know, feeling like this, the, the world's against us mentality pretty much, you know? That speech given in the, in the locker room has, has also have to um, – account for the uh, the play or plays we've been seeing. Well, let's see what happens here on this third down. They cannot let off the gas pedal here. They got to get Logan off the field. Pass going left side, and it is incomplete for Patterson. He was deep enough for a first down there. A little good bit too much arm. And, yeah, a little bit too much arm and good coverage. Because that was one-on-one -on -one coverage, and I think Patterson only had maybe a step or two on him. That was a 50-50 ball of the, that got there. Yeah. Could have went either way. Patterson did not have him beat at all. Well, already, I mean, this the second half is already uh, immensely better than the first half for Moreau. Yes, Moreau's starting to show some signs of life after this first series. Well, now now you have to score here. You it have to score. You force the fourth. You force them to punt. It is your of your utmost importance to score here. And let it go, should Moreau here. And a nice Logan bounce. That was going to be a bad punt, but a good bounce gives him about, what, 15 yards on that punt? I think Patterson was thinking about running for it. He was taking a step or two. Patterson was definitely thinking. He had the option to run it or kick it, and but he decided to punt it there. You don't want to do anything like that. First of all, I mean, <laughs> blatantly, that – that that's just disrespect at that point. Yeah, that, at that point, <laughs> you're up 33-0, and 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 that far back in, uh, on your own field. I mean, I that's got to be a gutsy call if he I, had the, I mean, if he I, ran for yeah, it. I guess you trust your defense, but uh, <laughs> the way I see it, if I'm Moreau, uh, I put that on my hit list. If I'm a Moreau, I'll I watch the fake any t time. All right, here we go. First down and ten for Moreau. Oh, almost a slip up on the snap there, or on the handoff exchange. 
and brought down by number 43. That is David Tupa. A very the disaster there on the, the wobbly oh, snap. Yeah, definitely. That could have went the other way. As Tucker, definitely good with his feet. He doesn't get slipped up very much. As that's, that's happened quite a few times where a couple of legs and feet kind of get jointed together on the line. But Tucker has not come down from those yet. He, uh, apart from the first fumble of the game, that's it. Yeah, he, he seems comfortable, though. He's had a couple guys in his face, but he made some amazing throws. Under center again, this is Devin Arnold. Arnold gets the outside angle, and he's going to get a first down for Moreau. And there you go. This is what we're talking about. Is Moreau needs to start getting that confidence going. This is one of the easiest ways to do so. Get a stop, get a first down after a negative play. And now Moreau getting that fighter's attitude now that, hey, I might be down, but I'm not out. Yeah, you, you know, it's also a matter of uh, making sure Logan does not cut one side of the field off like they did in the previous half. They are doing a good job of keeping that in check. Um, Genesis Duncan, the Asulu, did run, run him down at the end. Yes, yeah, so I think if Genesis, the speed of Genesis there, not getting there, that would have been dangerous for Logan. Yes, that would have been to the house. Under center again here is Tucker. Going to give it to Arnold again. Arnold's going to go inside the hash marks. Meets a host of Colts there. Terrence gets Harrison nice, was the uh, first one. Yes, gets a nice uh, jolt there. If the speed isn't there, the guys in the trench will get you. Exactly. Nine ten left to play here. And you got to like this, that Moreau, even though they're down, you know, big here, not panicking whatsoever, still staying confident and running their offense. I mean, you gotta have, of course, you gotta have a sense of urgency, but it's also good to make sure that you balance that with, you know, some tempo. Yeah, and, they're definitely switching it up with the tempo. Yeah, and also, you know, not being so uptight about your drive. You wanna make sure that, you know, it's a consensus, it's, it's a concise drive. If you get a big play, you gotta let your guys sit on it for a sec. Like, oh my gosh, I made that block, or oh my gosh, I got that first down, right? That's the confidence that a lot of people and a lot of fans don't really think about when they're watching the game. I mean, these kids, when when they're uh, when they're playing and they're getting beat, like the way Moreau's getting beat today, when a kid like Devin Arnold gets a first down, he's like, okay, now we're now something's going, now something's, you know, going right for us and that's why a lot of teams don't go tempo especially in high school because they want their kids to start feeling that way because then it loosens up the pressure you can open up for more bigger plays I also think that um, Logan does not have time to there was a false start meanwhile but Logan doesn't ha have time to mess around either um, they gotta be aware that this game could still be in Moreau's favor there is still time on the clock and another a whole another quarter so you can't ha you can't have guys playing with confidence and not executing you got to have guys keeping their foot on the pedal well if there's any example i mean just <laughs> look at the millions that uh the <laughs> atlanta falcons have given us uh the championship game against the 49ers the super bowl against the patriots the cowboys last year the t the lions game last year i mean I think the football community altogether has learned to not get comfortable with the lead. D definitely not. Just look up Super Bowl highlights and you will understand why. No, oh, yeah. So many Super Bowls have ended in comebacks. As we get one deep. Pass is going to be intercepted there. And that is Shimon V. Duncan Isulu. Trying to get at the outside angle. He's going to be brought down. And that is not something you want if you're Moreau there. It doesn't look like that they were on the same page there. His receiver did not break the route and go in. And that I ball mean, was floating forever. I mean, you, you now now you just negated all the good things that have gone your way. Now you're giving the ball back and de depending on your defense to execute again, which they have the last, last series, but who knows how tired they really are. There's a flag down on the field. Pre-snap penalty. 
Marcus was not happy about that flag. Holding. And uh, I think Marcus saw that right from the start. He was just shrugging his arms and, and pointing. Yeah, to he was the, shaking uh, his head and shrugging his yeah. arms at the referee. He did not like that call. Well, well, no, he was looking at the line there, and it looked like yeah, the motion, he knew, he knew. It looked like the motion just wasn't set, and I think the ball was snapped maybe a little too quick on that. Play. No, that was a holding, I believe. Yeah, they're, they're calling well, ten yards back. That's well, a holding. Well, yeah, but the uh, the, the 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 point is that uh, like. The, the motion wasn't set. The ball was snapped too early, and because the motion wasn't set properly, it yeah, Marcus Marcus knew hole. as soon as that ball was snapped. Let's see, motion left. Sanders is getting harassed in the pocket there, brought down by a host of Mariners. As we, we talked about the Guinness Book of World Records. Oh, there's an injury on the field. We talked about the Guinness Book of World Records earlier as a joke. Here's another joke about the Guinness Book of World Records. Since when has this ever happened where there is a football team that a certain person is rooting against called the Mariners, but also at, simultaneously there is a baseball team named the Mariners <laughs> that he is also rooting against at the same exact time. Hmm. It's got to be a huge coincidence. Oh, Friday Night Lights yes. under the lights. Oh, yes. We're getting the Guinness Book of World Records down here at James Logan, folks. Um, We're bringing it. As, uh, that was, I, I would just like to 54. point out the shiftiness that Marcus tried showing there. Yep. As I believe the, uh, the injured player was Jack Von Lewin. Uh, number 54, I believe, was the number I thought yeah, I saw. Yeah, when you're playing in the trenches like that, you, you're you you're more likely to get injured. But I'm glad he, he's okay and he walked off. It looks like he's uh, favoring just the left, or I'm sorry, the right arm, maybe right shoulder. It could be a stinger. Yeah, he got he got his wind knocked out. He got up right away, I believe. So hopefully nothing too serious there. First, or sorry, uh, this is a second down. It's 17. a pass play. Wide up the middle, DJ Johnson has it! Oh my goodness, another James Logan touchdown! I saw three guys open on that play, and Marcus took his first read and threw it down the middle perfectly and that's in stride. An and that's another um, crossing route. Yeah, Dante, you got the curl route right, on the bottom of the Johnson. screen. I believe it was um, Frankie Arguian with, with the curl route. He broke his route, and then we had one on the top of our screen and then down in the middle. Yeah, but that crossing route down down the seam was just executed perfectly. Well, there's by no DJ safety Johnson. help. There's no safety help yeah. across the middle of the field. They're running man coverage every play. I mean, Logan they are Paul running. They are running two safeties deep though, but that splits the middle of the field. Logan has commanded the oh, secondary. We have a new face. Way. High snap. Oh, high snap. Let's see if he's gonna get this two pointer. Breaks the tackle. He's running backwards now. Breaks another tackle. Oh, now he gets blasted. Was that Terrence Harrison again? Going no, for that was it? not Terrence Harrison. I saw number 70. I thought that was Terrence Harrison. Who, who was that? Not sure. I can't quite read that number. 66. That's the number. And Do that we have a 66? No, no 66 designation on the roster sheet for James Logan. As he is slow to get up, also, or well, he was slow to get up. He's favoring his left foot. That's unfortunate. Yeah, when you got a guy with that size running like that, it's kind of dangerous um, just to get taken down, especially with the awkward um, um, tackle he received there. As I want to point out, over on the uh, left side of the field, you can't really see it. There's some James Logan alumni down there. Yes, I believe I see some alumni. You got... Uh, I, I saw Reggie Robinson. He's wearing the black hoodie. Uh, we saw J Chase Sims last week as yeah, well. Yeah, Chase Sims last week was here. Uh, I believe Amato is also there too, the ex-defensive lineman. I also spot Coach Lighthizer down on the sideline at the 50 watching his, uh, his players on varsity play. Yeah, he is. He 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 coached a great game on JV today, this afternoon. 
Well, that JV team absolutely surprised me with uh, how they were able to adjust to Moreau's size after yeah. going down 7 nothing. They won their game 30-7. Uh, to seven. So far, that has been the closer game. Uh, so this is a 39 to nothing game here at James Logan against Moreau. Mm -hmm. Devin Arnold to return. This could be dangerous here as Devin Arnold is very shifty. Still on his down feet. To the 46. Carrying one guy on his back that just reminded me of George Kittle against the Saints. <laughs> uh, don't forget the face mask, too. Oh, Three man. guys and a face mask do, do against not, the Saints. Do not tell me to line up one-on-one -on, -one on Kittle. I'll, I'll quit the league. He, yeah, I will, <laughs> I will not tackle Kittle. I... I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> if I ha if I was a player, especially what, like specifically he, my size, and, and my coach told me to line up one on one on Kittle, I'd say, you know what? I'm tendering my resignation. I retire. <laughs> pull a Vontae Davis, just retire at halftime. Just retire at halftime, indeed. Oh man. Yeah, but George Kittle is an amazing route runner oh. against Stephon Gilmore. That, that game against the Patriots. And 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 sp we're, when you keep on bringing up Collinsworth, how about Collinsworth saying that he's not a great route runner? Yeah, Collinsworth him, ate his words him, there. Him and Aikman yeah. believed that for so long. And off of the middle. <laughs> Kittle was not the um, the brightest prospect, though, I got to say. He, he made a name for himself in college. So Marquez and V on the tackle there. And, I mean, I want to point out something here. On defense for James Logan, it just seems like there's always two people making contact with the ball carrier. I mean, it just seems like, especially for today, for every one player from a row, there's two guys on James I Logan. I think it just has to um, be that they want that secure tackle, um, especially with the size that they're matching up against. It's, it's definitely a mismatch. Tucker is looking to throw. He's got somebody wide open in the flat, and it's caught! Was there a flag it? on that play? Or did he drop it? Did he drop it? I think he did. Yeah, it, was, it slipped right through his hands as I was informed. Mal Malachi Salazar Alexander was the intended receiver there. Wide open. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's a killer. Tucker with an amazing throw, though, and the well, rollout to well, his right side. Well, the side. rollout to... I mean, he turned around, and there was a there was a Logan player right in his face. Was able to shift his way out of it and throw back across his body, going opposite, right? All arm strength, not even setting his feet. Yeah, throws it over three James Logan players right into the hands. of You Alexander. also got to question the discipline of the James Logan secondary. They kind of let off the gas as it looked like he was about to get sacked, but he he got that ball off. Motion on the line again, and the line all gets tripped up on each other, but it doesn't matter because <laughs> the tackle is V. I mean, this James Logan secondary, they are legit. I'm just gonna call them legit at this point. They are too legit to quit. <laughs> they have so far looked insane in the last two games that we played and that we've watched uh bishop o'dowd is the opponent next week and depending on uh depending on what's going on and how we can possibly do this there might actually be a broadcast next week um uh, from my youtube channel so i'll uh, i'll give you guys the uh, the account information it's the gaming runners productions youtube channel unless uh, I get approval to use the James Logan YouTube channel. Uh, we're possibly going to bring my equipment and broadcast at Bishop O'Dowd, which will be a very, very big step for us because we have never done an away broadcast before. But we have to get it approved by Bishop O'Dowd, and that game is definitely going to be a, a game to watch. As tonight, so far, I mean, it looks like Logan is just absolutely in command. Yeah, I think that... Um Moreau um, definitely um, had an option to go for it there. It wouldn't hurt to go for it, considering that they already had to punt. Um, they're down 39-0. to zero. Why not go for it and see what happens? I mean, you have to think that, but then at the same time, you don't want to absolutely destroy these kids' confidence. I mean, yeah, I, I get that. Um, their, their defense has been doing a little bit better, but mm -hmm. their offense, I think, needs to uh, step it up a little bit more. They've got guys that can execute on um, offense. Tucker um, is a guy to look for. Exactly. 
And that's a uh, timeout call by Moreau. Mariners want to talk it over before they take it this next defensive snap. So we're going to get a shot of the scoreboard real quick for you guys. Yeah, I mean, you, the down the down to go marker ball and uh, quarter marker are all cut off by our scoreboard, but it's okay. I mean, so far, I, like Brian said, I mean, there's really no word to put it, but shocking is the, it's the only one that my communication brain can uh, think of right now. I mean, this is just an absolute routing. I want to consider something like against Grace Davis last week, Logan came in with little to no preparation, like less than 12 hours prior to the game. They were informed there was a game. Like, that was amazing on their end to pull off a game like that, 41-8. to eight. And, I mean, one thing that I think that is impressive is the fact that the, the, the script has so far changed. I mean, uh, what I mean by that is the first game, oh, goodness, who was it against? I my brain is just not working. Ensenal. Ensenal. Yes. Ensenal. Yes, you're correct. Against Ensenal, the offense uh, was not really moving the ball very much. They, I mean, they only had two, uh, four, a 14 to six score, and we had a um, a kickoff return touchdown. Jeremiah Pun Patterson. Or was that a punt return or a kickoff? It was a kickoff, kickoff return. return. It was a scoop and score. I see. Um, and there's Patterson right there. Speak of the devil. Oh, and he's going to break he's got it out room. He's got the room. corner. He's got room. Can he get this block? He cannot. What? But he's going to outrun him. Breaks the tackle. Cannot stay in bounds. Oh, man. And speaking of Jeremiah Patterson, he just said, wait, did you say my name? <laughs> yeah, he heard us. He heard us I up mean, at the booth. Man, is, he, we're not, we're him not against, live. Him we're against Insanal put the target on his back. He scored three touchdowns alone. And all that the scores were from him. But, I mean, the growth from this James Logan team. I mean, as they are in field goal, field, posi field goal position right now, right? They score here, anything, and they have surpassed their point total from last week. Handoff up the middle and brought down at the 10 yard line. Uh, I mean, you have to sit here and wonder is it. Really, that James Logan is not playing strong opponents because I feel I personally feel like uh, Ensenal was a strong opponent. Moreau will always be a strong opponent, uh, but you see the growth of this team constantly throughout the week. Last week, our offense w struggled slow at first. Slow start. Slow start. This week, so far, it's been a concise game. Pass to Patterson for a James Logan touchdown. Looks like they give that one to Patterson after that big play. Yep. I got to say, Let though. Finish it off. You talk about how playing weak teams. I don't think that these teams are weak. Because no. the teams last Absolutely. season were, were absolutely weak because there were games with the running clock, absolute blowouts. I mean, these teams were handpicked to be moved up in a, div in a division together. Um, la uh, at the end of last season, as uh, coming in to kick again is Marquez. He's got it, did he? Yes, he. Yes, did. he does. And but now you see, Logan has now set their own personal record for points scored in, in this season for a second week in a row, which you have to wonder now, right? Is Logan starting to? click it are they starting to get this good i think i mean i think they they're they're one of those teams that go, go off to a slow start but once they get into that rhythm it, there's no stopping them like they're gonna blow through teams this season if they can't if they don't stop i think honestly that this week what it, it so far has been a statement that james logan is legit i mean these teams had the scoreboard doesn't show it from last season the 36 to 20 score but these these two teams had a war against each other last yeah. year uh, and for for this point swing to sway this far in Logan's favor it's a testament to how Logan has been able to adjust to their new roster they lost a lot of seniors last year that played key roles in those games and, and, that, and that specific game against Moreau 
Chase Sims. Chase Sims had some seams in that game that exactly. he Exactly. He had a pick six uh, in that game. Don't con also, we consider the, the chemistry of the team changing after Coach Rodriguez left for uh, Tennessee. Um, he, he, he was like the, the, the cornerstone of that team with the, the new chemistry after he was brought in in 2018. This is a good return here. This could be trouble, and it is trouble for James Logan. On the return here is Chapman, and Chapman is going, and he is in for a Moreau touchdown. All right, my answer mentally was answered. The, this will not be a shutout. <laughs> but it, it's always nice to get on the board, you know? Like, well, like playing in the game like this, just exactly. having fun, getting on the board is something. I mean, is also uh, another thing. I mean, at this point, it's just you know, you know, to to to, to Logan, it's whatever. Yeah, you know? like this, this like, game is pretty much decided. But if you're Moreau, you're just thinking, yes, we scored. We did. Just, we've just done get it. some points we've on the it. score scoreboard. Um, bring it in to next week. Exactly. I mean, like, you know, the the. A lot of uh, uh, a lot of things that you want to consider here, uh, as a Moreau coach, player, or fan, is that yeah, this game might not end the way you want it to. You might not come back and win this, but you're building up confidence for next week. You want yeah. to have something go right, especially late in the game, especially coming towards the end. Maybe see if Moreau can get a stop or a turnover, turn it around, score another touchdown, keep the momentum going. Yeah. You know? So at the end of the day, I mean, this game, it, it's all about having fun. It, it, as long as the kids have fun, it's beneficial to them. They're going to learn from yes, this. Yes, yes. Emotions know? are running high tonight, and I got to say, our crowd is, is a little bit better from last week after <laughs> last week's opening game. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, and... A lot of foul language was thrown around. We, we don't really uh, condone that at the school. Yes. I mean, the three eyes. That's three the, eyes. That's the one thing that we like to pride ourselves on. Integrity, interconnectedness. I mean, <laughs> we want to make sure that we're the ones that are setting the example. Yes, this is a, this is a very safe learning environment um, that we are um, in right now. Uh, I mean... We, what what I want to see is if they're if Moreau is having a conversation here of whether or not they want to go onside kick. I think yeah, it looks like Logan's lining up, getting ready for that onside kick. They got a few guys on the fifty. Let's see what they want to do. I per personally, I think tell your defense make a stop, and we'll see what happens next drive. All right. It looks like they're all aligned uh, pretty evenly, so I think this might be maybe a squib kick, if anything. Yeah, just get it to to bounce. All right, here we go. And a relatively, relatively squib kick. That one's kick. going out of bounds. Yeah. Time uh, here in real life is <laughs> 848. Normally, games end at 9 o'clock, but it, we are here in the third quarter, 2.12 on the clock, and it's it's almost 9 o'clock. Usually, games like these end at 9.30, I would say. As I, I want to uh, emphasize here that I am beyond uh, happy with... Oh, are they going to re-kick here? They are going to re-kick. Yeah, I think Logan elected for a re-kick instead of taking it at the 35. Hmm. Well, then, that's a bit odd. Anyways. You know, uh, it's just it's just um, sportsmanship on their end um, just to um, let them re-kick it. Because you're taking your ball at the ball at the 35-yard line, um, potentially setting yourself up to score again, add more to the scoreboard. It's just it's just a little bit disrespectful to stat pad and like add more to the scoreboard when you know you're winning the game. Indeed, I mean like just the, a little just, bit of a friendly it's gesture. The, it's the whole uh, idea of integrity. Yeah. <laughs> and James Logan really sticking by their words here, giving them another chance for a re-kick, but that does not work out. Says the ball will be spotted at the 38. 
Anyways, as uh, as I was going to say before, I noticed that there was going to be a re-kick. I would like to uh, uh, express uh, that our crowd has done a great job uh, of the last two games, and also away crowds have done a great job of the last two games to be socially distanced and wearing masks. I mean, I don't even see people taking off masks to, to yell or cheer or anything. I mean, it, it, it's definitely great to see that, uh, that everybody is working together here and trying to keep Friday Night Lights here at James Logan. We have one more game left to go before, uh, before we have to turn it over to NFHS and playoffs. Yes. And you have to wonder, if James Logan wins out, will they host a playoff game? I mean, it, there's a possibility, but you got to account for De La Salle and Pittsburgh because we do potentially run into them in the playoffs. And, of course, Pittsburgh last year gave us a, uh, uh, a uh, Pittsburgher. <laughs> <laughs> the Pirates. Oh, man. Handoff off the middle, shut down by the Moreau defense. Moreau's just playing for pride at this point. Uh, you you know gotta what? give it. Play you gotta give it to them for for sticking in this game, though. Exactly. I mean, playing playing for pride is just that is that is the way to go, honestly. All right, here we go. Is the. Uh, Moreau's going to focus on DJ Johnson, and this is going to be a nice tackle in the backfield by number 66. They sent three guys up the middle there. As I, for some reason, I cannot uh, scroll down on their roster sheet anymore. It was uh, Leckham, John Leckham, the second. Third and 16 now for James Logan. Another blitz coming. And a screen is incomplete. Oh, lucky that wasn't intentional grounding there. As uh, Martin yeah. just barely got into the picture. <laughs> yeah, that was Martin. I thought that was Sammy Flores for a second. Oh, no, 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 no. That was Sammy Flores. I, Sammy Flores, okay. I, I mix them up all the time because they run very similar. Yes, the, those guys have amazing footwork. They have the same body size, you know. Like, it's hard to tell people apart, especially when it's really dark out there. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, Flores just barely got there in the final second and trying to get a handle on the ball. I don't think if Flores doesn't break Those through the line. Those blockers um, uh, broke out too fast, um, did not give mm -hmm. Marcus time to throw it. Patterson, Patterson with a high ball. Yeah. Going to kick it out of – well, he tried to kick it out of bounds as he he hopped, angled it out of bounds, and kicked it. They're, they're, Patterson had an option to run it too. Like he had room. But he just chose to, to punt it out of good sportsmanship. Indeed, out of good sportsmanship. And, I mean, I, I absolutely love the sportsmanship being shown by James Logan High School, especially last week, too, because yeah. obviously there was chippiness involved from last week. But, I mean, overall, there was there was nothing flashy that was going on. Logan was just playing their game. And yeah, yeah. A, a little bit later on, they started, you know, doing what they're doing here, which is trying to, you know. Just trying to play the game. Play, have fun. Yeah. Let the other team have fun. It's about a gain of seven on the play right there. It was caught by Chapman again, and he was the one who got the kickoff return touchdown. May not be showing on the scoreboard, but but uh, Tucker is having a great game. Tucker has made, made some amazing throws, I got to say. Definitely. I mean, the interception, of course, will – uh, way down his stats, but you, you eliminate the interception from the equation. He's had a decent game throwing the football. Let's see if he can get a touchdown pass, possibly. Is Devin Arnold's going to get this first down? Devin Arnold! Oh my goodness! Is uh, if Stephen Stone from James Logan, number 22, did not get an arm on him, Arnold would have ran free for the touchdown. Looks like we're heading to the end of the quarter. Yes, we definitely are. 
And at the end of the third quarter, the score is 46 to seven. James Logan leading the Moreau Catholic Mariners. Casters will take a timeout, 30 seconds. So that's the end of the quarter, we'll start the fourth. All right, here we go. First and 10 from, it looks like the 40, no, the 36 yard line-ish. Big handoff to Arnold and pressure in Tucker's face. Throws it, oh, almost caught, but there's gonna be a flag. As I think there might be a penalty on James Logan here. I'm surprised they did not call the flag as um, Arnold was rolling out or uh, Tucker, uh, my mistake. There was a holding in the backfield I spotted. I'm not sure if the refs saw the same thing, but we do have some contact in the secondary. There was holding on the offensive line. Wow, so whoever, that ref in the secondary definitely spotted that from all the way out there. <laughs> and and it's the referee that uh it's that the was side judge. You know, no, it was the referee that was uh <laughs> uh laughing because we had a uh, a Moreau timekeeper up here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that guy was good to talk oh, to. I liked man. him. I liked him. <laughs> Sharp eyes over there and there's another hold. That will bring they, him they back. They bring him back again. Was it a false start or another hold? I thought I saw hold. Yeah. It was a holding call. But they're bringing them all the way back. Oh, my goodness. That is what? First and 30? <laughs> no, it's first and 20. Okay. First and 25 is what I'm getting. Oh, man. The ball is spotted on the 42-yard line of Moreau. We'll talk about a confidence booster and building up for confidence for next week. You get this first down here. With 25 yards? Yeah, but you got to get past confidence. the secondary. And that, and that's why you have Devin Arnold as he slips a tackle here, trying to get out of bounds, and he does right around the first down marker, probably about five yards behind it. The first down marker is at the 26. Oh, yeah, that's a, that, that was the that's original line of, line scrimmage, of scrimmage marker. marker. Well, hey, hey this night is a little bit long. I don't blame good. you. I don't blame you. This night has, has well, gone hey, on Well, just as good. Enough. Five yards behind the uh, uh, original first down marker. That's a 10-yard carry almost. Yeah, that, it brings it down to second and 15. They just flipped the field there. Second and 15 now. As in other news, the Giants just tied the game with the two-run homer from Evan Longoria. <laughs> Let's see if they fin let's see if they finish that game off. <laughs> I imagine that they're going to give it up in the ninth inning if they even take the lead. Hannah High off. snap. Chapman slips a tackle, and he's going to be brought down right around the 35-yard line. Can, can we credit Devin Arnold for that block? That was an amazing block by well, Devin Arnold, and then a nice broken tackle too. Devin Arnold listed right here is a senior 6'2 at 185 pounds for his size, and well, he has some speed. And, and, a, and a dual sport athlete. 
Yeah, Devin Arnold, uh, basketball I, I, too. I wonder if uh, he might be, uh, he might have track on his resume as well, or some sort of a spring sport. He is I well would not be surprised. He is, he is well conditioned because, I mean, here we are in the fourth quarter and the kid is not giving up. Absolutely well conditioned. Pass is incomplete. Now it's going to bring up a third, or no, fourth down and nine. Now I was just informed that we are running on a uh, running clock since the score is a little bit out of control. Keeping it professional as much as we can. I mean, it's just, I was saying that uh, I was really expecting World War III out in this football field today. I mean, of course, you know, by, by saying that, I mean, I don't discredit Logan, I don't want to sound like, you know, I didn't have confidence in them or anything. Two I just rivals thought, playing against each other. Exactly. I just thought it was going to be, you know, like a rivalry, like how the Giants and Dodgers are always competitive no matter what happens. No matter yeah, what. No, no matter team, how whatever. bad one team is, like, there will, it will always be a close game exactly. when it comes to rivalry games like this. And Arnold is not going to get the first down, but you've got to love the effort from the kid as this game has now just pretty much died down to this thus far and as I almost amazing knocked my effort by Arnold and <laughs> accidentally and almost knocked my chair into the coordinator for uh, Moreau that was gonna not be good <laughs> oh my goodness I was trying to sit down on my chair and I knock it down on the floor almost <laughs> oh my goodness We appreciate it. <laughs> We're just having fun up here. Yes, exactly. As I muted my microphone because the uh, Moreau coordinator just gave us uh, a uh, big ups. He enjoys our broadcasting. And, I mean, we like to keep it professional over here. We like to, you know, of course, we're on. Um, a little bit of bias we're, up we're here little, and there. We're a little biased. You know, James Logan YouTube channel. We're James Logan graduates, of course. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's just, it, it's, it's a game. It's meant to be fun. Uh, as you get a barrage it. of Colts on that tackle. Oh, my goodness. Or a barrage of Mariners, my mistake. I mean, it looked like all but three players were on top of them. <laughs> I, saw, I saw a fourth player come out Oh, late. my goodness. I mean, talk about just not giving up. This game has just been, <laughs> uh, you know, like, even though uh, this game has been yeah, a it. little difficult for, uh, for Moreau, I mean, still never giving up. And I mean, you gotta love it. As I was, as I was uh, being informed, uh, we we they like to call the shipload of Mariners. Hey, <laughs> that is actually a very very good analogy. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. man, going fishing out there. <laughs> <laughs> And timeout for Moreau. Moreau does call a timeout There's indeed. There's an injury, that's why. Injury timeouts. Of course, this this is something, th this is the worst thing to see is when a game is decided and you still get an injury. Looks like he probably just has cramps, though, as he's trying to stretch yeah. it out. Yeah, it looks like he's just sitting down, stretching it out, nothing big. And there's George right there. George gets some action. <laughs> George Maldonado. George Maldonado. Little story about George Maldonado. He's known me since I was a kid. I went to uh, uh, elementary school down at uh, Hillview Crest Elementary School. He's the P he was the PA te a PE teacher there. Uh, did a couple things for CCMS also when I went to CCMS, and then became the athletic uh, trainer here at James Logan High School. Got to see him a couple of times when I almost uh, tore a calf. Truth story and uh, had a major hip injury when I was in cross country and track and field for this school. Showing blitz here, Mariners are showing blitz. Let's see if they see in the ship load. Looks like they're going fishing. Looks like they're just gonna run down the clock here offensively also. Yeah, run just milk the, the clock a little second. bit. 
Here comes the ship load. Bit blitz picked up. A guy gets tripped up and caught by 14 right there. That's Romeo Lars. Romeo Lars. That's our. That's the first time we've called his name tonight. A little bit of playing time for everybody tonight for the Colts. Exactly. You know, Mark Marcus did a great job rolling out there and what? throwing on his on his uh across his well, body. He, he's a designated fourth wide receiver, and when uh, Patterson actually wasn't in for the first quarter, uh, Lars came in as the designated third receiver. Well, Patterson wasn't playing in the first quarter. I don't know what was up there. Maybe disciplinary. I think they wanted to give Frankie injuries. a little bit of time. Yeah, Frankie that's Ari it. Speaking of Frankie, at top of the screen, that's where he is one on one with the corner. Motion 53, and it's a handoff right up the middle. Aaron Vu coming in as number 53 with the motion. Listed as defensive end and middle linebacker. <laughs> and, and here's a name that we've been waiting to call all night long Kyle Tarzan. Kyle Tarzan is finally coming in. Kyle Tarzan! <laughs> AKA Kyle Tuzon. That's Not sure why he's listed as Kyle Tarzan. Uh, on we, the we need to ask them that. Yes, I got asked. I got asked coach after this game. As that is now the fourth designated running back. So we Be see a lot he, of he 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 is he is fast. We we well now we see four designations for running back, wide receiver, and also tight end. You also had Aaron Vu. He's a defensive end. He he lined up at tight end. Roll off from Sanders. Gonna look to throw, and it's, is that caught? Oh my goodness, caught by Angelo Forbes there. Angelo Forbes. <laughs> Angelo Forbes, literally the smallest guy on the field. <laughs> Angelo Forbes, nice catch. Look, it, look, it looked like a quarterback keeper for a second, but yeah, Sanders did, did roll out and, and threw the ball at the last second. You know, Amazing one, execution. One, one thing I wanna point out here with uh, Kyle Tarzan is the way that he has his pants uh, adjusted. Looks like a looks like a uh, certain player who got fined for the 49ers in a championship game. I think his name was like Frank Gore or something. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, that, uh, <laughs> yeah, that guy uh, for, for rolling up his uh, for rolling up his pants. I don't know. Probably his, his socks were too low. Yeah, maybe 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 he's a future Hall of Famer. Maybe not. Who knows? Yeah, that, that he's guy relatively unknown. I'm just kidding. Yeah, that guy must be <laughs> someone's grandpa or something. Yeah. yeah. How about this? His uh, younger son, at the Frank age Gore of 19, Franco Jr., projected to be NFL ready by the age of 21. And if, in that case, if he is ready at the age of 21 and is drafted and his dad is still in the league, we have the first father-son duo to ever play in the NFL at the same time. I, wa I want to see Frank Gore suit up for the Niners one last time. That's all Kyle I want to see. Kyle Shanahan and... John Lynch, Jed York, I know you guys aren't listening, but if by some miracle you are, sign Frank Gore immediately. I'm sign Frank Gore, draft Frank Gore Fra Jr. Uh, 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 Jed, I, I, I have a proposition for you. You're sitting on a gold mine if you release Frank Gore uniforms and sign him back, okay? <laughs> I don't especially, think he's in it for the money. Especially for the red 94s, okay? <laughs> Sanders, one-on-one, -on -one, intercepted by Devin Arnold. And Devin Arnold continues his great game. He's going to try and run it here. And run, and ran down at the 36-yard line. Devin Arnold cements himself as the blue, tri uh, the blue chip player tonight for Moreau. The he can return. Line. He can run. He can catch. He can cover. What a Swiss Army knife player he is. Indeed. I mean... The silver lining, quite literally, the silver lining in tonight's game is Devin Arnold and uh, Chapman. Arnold, Chapman, and Tucker are the the uh, the um, bright spots of this team. Well, let's see if if Tucker can quickly get a touchdown here to end this game off, as we have a minute and twenty five seconds left before this game ends. Snap, handoff. And whew, nice, nice run there, and a great block by number 77. And once again, I'm not allowed to uh, scroll down on my roster sheet, on my digital roster sheet. This is frustrating. Sefu. 
This ended as the tackle. He was the one who got the pancake block at the end of the play there. 45 seconds remaining. As James Logan's going to improve to 3-0. and And coming into this game, they right. were ranked in the NCS at 13. While, uh, or I'm sorry, yes, ranked 13 in the NCS. And Moreau was ranked 27. I wonder if now that ranking is going to go up. And by how much is it going to go up in the NCS? I, I think it, they'll, it'll go up a few, uh, one or two um, spots. There's a lot of competitive teams in that in the NCS. The California State rankings uh, listed Moreau at 288 and Logan at 153 before tonight's game. It'll be interesting to see how that's going to change at the after t the end of today's game as James Logan has completed their win tonight against. The Moreau Catholic Mariners by a score of 46 to 7. I mean, an absolute routing and a one that was beyond surprising that we were not expecting whatsoever. Well, I think they capitalized on the keys of the game. They did not make much mistakes. Only one mistake I saw was was that fumble early and, in the game. And, and, and a more complete game by James Logan today, indeed. I mean, like you said, there was no there was no uh, mistakes shown whatsoever. As you can see here. Both teams showing respect for each other, lining up right next to each other, right in front of each other again. Coaches shaking hands and hugging. I mean, this is what a rivalry is all about, everybody. It's more than football. It's, it's about all about the game sometimes. Exactly. It's not all about the game. So this is what a rivalry is all about, being able, to being, able ha being able to be rivals, but also being able to be friends at the end of the night. Yeah. Rivals on the field, but... Off the field, no more. And James Logan is going to improve to 3-0 now. And once again, it's going to be uh, pretty interesting to see what James Logan is going to be able to do come next week against Bishop O'Dowd, how their rankings are yeah, going to yeah. change. I mean, it'll be a um, very interesting to see as James Logan will come home tonight with a victory uh we'd like to thank everybody for joining us here tonight and watching tonight's game here on the james logan youtube channel and on my channel if i do end up uploading it again on my channel um fun night indeed for james logan for moreau a rather frustrating one to say to, to put it at the absolute least um that's pretty much it I don't know if Brian wants any closing statements before I give us our thanks and. Stop no, I recording. think you pretty much covered all of it. Right. Uh, you know, it's a, it was a fun game to to call, and it is definitely a fun rivalry to watch. Exactly. So I would like to give a final thanks once again uh, to Brian Lee for being the color analyst tonight. Uh, Kitty Pinyanaway, aka KTP, being the director for today, and Gabriella Udelhoven being the camera operator for tonight. We want to thank you guys for watching once again. Please like, leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you guys enjoy this content on my channel and also on the James Logan YouTube channel. Uh, we're growing our community, and we enjoy it. Uh, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, especially comment. All right. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone.